the Deluxo. 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 The Deluxo. The Deluxo. Deluxo. The Deluxo. Assembly video. The Deluxo kit can be purchased with a filter and a tray that can be wet for a functional cooling effect. Both kits come with the following items. Small nuts and bolts, foam tape, carriage bolts with nuts and washers, bracket arms, folding door edge brackets, body tension bolts and squared washers, back end cap, gap plates, vent side plates, decal, intake end cap with screen, top bar with flip up vent, top plate, unrolled 24 gauge swamp cooler body. Assembly of the Deluxo Swamp Cooler Kit requires the following tools. A screwdriver, pliers or wrench, 5 16 or 8 millimeters, gloves, and safety glasses. <clears throat> safety glasses. Please read your build instructions thoroughly before beginning the process, as it contains some tips and warnings that will help you build the cooler efficiently your first try. Next, you're going to want to protect the surface you're building on. The kit is steel and does have some pointy edges. It could scratch or mar the surface that you're building on. Next, lay out all the parts of the kit, verify the contents, and familiarize yourself with all the pieces. You can go ahead and set all the pieces aside except the can body. And for the first step, we're going to need the foam tape and the intake end cap. The first step consists of cutting or ripping the foam tape into five pieces. Three short, about inch to inch and a half long pieces, which will go around the intake circumference. The two long strips will then get placed in the U-channel, evenly between the bolt holes. The next step can be the hardest, but with a couple of tips, you should be able to achieve it without too much effort. What we're going to do is roll the can body. This is achieved by first lining up the edge with the turned up lip on your table or whatever edge you're going to use to roll the can body and slide it off about half an inch. We can now carefully push on the turned up lip, which will start a slight bend about half inch away from the turned up lip. If done carefully, we'll have an, a slight bend across the entire lip. Don't press too close to the table's edge because we don't want to crease the metal. We just want a gentle bend in the steel. If done correctly, the turned up lip will now face towards us and no longer straight up in the air. Make sure that the turned up lip is still 90 degrees to the can body, but this angle difference is achieved because we've started to actually bend the can. If you continue to repeat this process in about half inch to inch long steps, the can will start to roll in on itself. Stop when you get to the other side with the two strips and the flat area with the bolt holes. This area will be reserved for the cooler vent bottom and needs to remain flat. Once you've done this, the can should at least form a U. And once you've formed a U, you can kind of turn it in on itself and roll it up like you would a newspaper. The tighter and more evenly you get this, the better. And all we really need to do is make it slightly smaller than the end caps so that the end caps don't drop through. If you can't, it's fine. Just get it close to the end cap size. Here you can see the end caps will drop right through if the can's too big. And if that's the case, no problem. Just add the end cap bolt first and the back end cap to hold it in place. And if you have rolled the can tight enough, you can open up the can and stick the back end cap in and then bolt it on. So now all we have to do is add the body tension bolt with its squared washer. Make sure the squared washer is on top and thread it into the nut and then gently tighten this bolt. We don't want to tighten any of these bolts 
until we get the can and the whole body and vent fully assembled. Now after we do that, we can do the other side with the intake end cap and the foam tape. Now this intake end cap is only held in by the foam tape, so you can position it before we tighten it down. But once the cooler is built, all we need to do is loosen the cooler can body up and you can reposition this intake to be level with the ground however the cooler ends up sitting on your vehicle. With the intake end cap in, we can go ahead and install the tension bolt and its squared washer for the intake end. And now you can see we've basically got the can body done. We're about halfway there. And now we're moving on to the last step that really requires any skill or finesse. We're gonna build the vent portion that actually sticks through the car window. First we'll start by installing the center three bolts that hold the top plate to the 90 degree turned up lip. Once we've bolted that on, we can slide in the side plates and put in the, uh, install the top two screws that go through the top plate into the side plates. We can install the back two bolts that go through the bottom lip into the side plates. And now we're going to install the bracket arms. The bracket arms actually go between the U-channel and the bottom lip of the cooler vent. And then this, uh, and then the bolts go through the um, bracket and this one on the end goes through the U-channel, then through the bracket, then through the vent lip, then through the side plate. Now this gap plate is a little tricky. You actually have to put it all the way in the cooler and slide it forward so that it actually ends up between the nuts and the side plate. And then um, you can actually, once you line up this hole, you can send a bolt through it and it'll actually bolt this little metal sandwich together. And that sandwich will be the um, adjustable uh, gap plates on the inside, then your side plates. Then on the outside, you'll have your bracket arms, which will bolt up to the side plates, um, bolting it all together and forming a nice steel sandwich. All right, now this last step is very important. Before we tighten down any of these bolts for the side plates, we need to make sure that this top bar, that's the part that tucks into the felt channel on your door when you install it, aligns with the bottom U channel. That's the part where the window actually rolls up into when you install this cooler. The slots in these side plates actually allow you to manipulate the uh, upper top plate and the bottom flap of the vent in and out to align these. And doing so will make sure that the face of your vent is a flat plane, not twisted like a cheap piece of wood from the hardware store. The last step's fairly easy. All we need is a carriage bolt, the two nuts, the folding bracket, and the wing nut. Now, if you notice, one of these washers is actually a square cut washer and will fit over the carriage bolt head. So we're gonna wanna put that on first, then a washer, and then tighten down that whole assembly onto the bracket arm with a nut. The next thing I like to do is put the wing nuts upside down. It'll make it easier when tightening later. Then you can put on the folding bracket and the last nut. Make sure to go back, check all the tightness on your nuts and bolts, and do this frequently throughout its use. And you're done. Congratulations, you've completed building your Deluxo Swamp Cooler. Make sure to check out the links below and in the description for more Swamp Cooler products from Ecofage and videos about Ecofage Swamp Coolers. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll catch you guys next time. The Deluxo. 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 The Deluxo.